started everything. So we got my grandmother an ancestry DNA quit for Christmas. Oh no. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> She's part Eastern European. She's fighting with them that it's wrong. <laughs> He's like, but clearly these things are not very accurate. Yeah. So, yeah. And they're like, fine. He's... Like, it's okay. She's like, we are English, Ireland, Scottish with a little French. Yeah. These uh, no, ancestry no. reports and DNA tests are really outing people's prejudices. Not only that, but it, I mean, I want to say ancestry is should just be like their commercials should be like ancestry.com destroying people's lives for the last 10 years <laughs> i mean it is everybody from finding family members you didn't want to i mean i have got so many we have got to do a show where people just can write in and tell us their ancestry oh, yeah. nightmares. Yeah. Like it could be you anonymous, know, anonymous why? ancestry nightmares. Why hasn't ancestry hired uh, Maury Povich to be their spokesperson now? He I know it. Like you used to need me to find out your dad wasn't your real father. Now you can just use ancestry.com. It's perfect. <laughs> it is. 23 and me. 23 and me. Yep. They put me out of a job. Yeah, they put me out of a job. I mean, I, it's it's so crazy. I mean, I, without saying names, I'm going to tell you somebody I heard a story about found out that they were abandoned in a parking lot when they were a <gasps> baby. <laughs> okay, well... What did they find out? Just yeah. all through Ancestry. I don't want to get into it. And like I, Ancestry. Yeah. All through Ancestry.com. Like all the DNA and like pulled up like old newspaper art. And I'm telling you, it's insane. I have got so many stories. I'm, listen, people, if you're out there, couple of instigators on Facebook, shoot me a message. Tell me your story. I won't say any names, but I'm telling you there is a ton of stories out there of ancestry nightmares. Yes, I want to hear them. Yeah. So, um, so yeah. So, all right. Well, I learned about the swamp buggy. Um, Margaret, let's get into your drama with your neighbor. <laughs> okay. So, quick, just quick update on my felonious neighbor. Yes. Um. I think last time we talked, I said that I overheard something that made me think maybe he was moving out. He was out. moving out. And he did. He did, in fact, move out. And so, okay. Um, so he had a car and his girlfriend had a car. And then there was this crappy little scooter always parked by his girlfriend's car. Mm -hmm. And I just, and it would only be there, like, once every couple of weeks, just, like, overnight and then gone. And I kind of thought it was, like, a friend that would just stay with them sometimes or whatever. But the day they moved out, it's, like, 9 o'clock at night. They're long gone. Their cars are gone, everything. This scooter's still there. And I was kind of like, I don't understand. Like, there's clearly no one home. It's dark. Why is their friend's scooter here? Whatever. So I say something about it to my husband. And he says, oh, no, that scooter has nothing to do with them. It's this kid that parks it there and climbs over so there's a fence behind our neighborhood and on the other side it's a different neighborhood yeah and he says oh yeah he parks it in our neighborhood and climbs hops the fence and goes into that other neighborhood yeah what and i'm what? like uh okay this cannot fly <laughs> yeah. um so i put a note on his scooter that said parking for residents you know of our neighborhood only like you're gonna be towed if you park here again and so the kids always park. Also, do you have any theories on what this is about? He's about 21 years old. He parks his scooter here about three or four o'clock in the afternoon and then leaves the next morning around 830. Hmm. What, is, what is happening? Anyway, so I left that note. Didn't see him again for a couple weeks. Then he shows up again. And I was like, really? So I text our board president about it and whatever. And but I've just had it. And the next, because the people climbing over the fence is a problem, too, because it just, it invites, like, shady behavior and break-ins, you know what I mean? You just, like, don't want people doing that kind of thing in your neighborhood. And, like, why, 
why doesn't he just drive into that neighborhood? Why is he parking? Yeah, it's very bizarre. I just, I don't, I don't want that here. Right. And I was working from home the next day and I knew his routine now that he would always come back for it about 830. So I texted my neighbor friend whose back porch faces the fence where he climbs over and I said, is it okay if I sit on your porch for a little while tomorrow morning? <laughs> you are kid? so out of control. <laughs> you are so crazy. So I <laughs> there, and I was sitting on her porch swing. And sure enough, like clockwork, here comes this clown. So I get up before he can see me. And I've got my dog with me. And I'm acting all casual. And I go stand in front of the fence where he wants to climb over just acting like I'm walking my dog and he's standing there waiting for me to leave. And I'm just taking my sweet time, like looking at my phone, acting like I have no idea what he's about to do. And then I decide to turn my back to him and start walking away. And he's, I hear him behind me, all the clanging and stuff. He starts hopping over the fence. So I just turn around and stand there and stare at him. And I go, and there's no trespassing signs hanging all over the fence. He just climbed and stuff. And I say, you know, you're not supposed to do that, right? And he goes, yeah, I just don't care. And I was like, oh, oh, so that's how this is going to be. <laughs> and then where you start walking towards his scooter parked by my house. And I was like, and you know, you're, that's your scooter, right? You're not supposed to park that there either. And he goes, yeah, I know I won't do it again. I was like, really? Because you were left a note not to do it again last week. And yet here you are. And so by this time, we're like at his scooter and he's getting on. And he looks at me and he goes, have fun with your $20,000 house. <laughs> and I just said to him, I'm like, the okay. kid on the scooter thing? Yes. And then so I look at him and I just go, have fun with your effing scooter. <laughs> and he drove off. And that's how we ended the exchange. <laughs> so. <laughs> so did you, so you single-handedly just saved your neighborhood from well, did you have your gun with you? Did you? I did not. <laughs> well, don't listen, Jen. Don't, 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 don't. Uh, what do you? She doesn't need to. She's in enough. Here, I'll tell Please. You what I did. It crossed my mind. It crossed my mind. But the reason I didn't is, first of all, I had my big dog with me, who's mean, and he was growling at the kids, so I wasn't all that worried about it. Second of all. I just really did not think the situation would get to that point, and like you really don't want to involve a gun, like with know, a scooter. Like, I just, think it's fine. You, she doesn't need to. Like nothing good can come of me bringing that with me, so I, I made the executive decision not to. But you can your gun to Dillard's. That's <laughs> in the crappy part of town. <laughs> so what do we think? So I went to my hairdresser after this happened. And <laughs> later that day, and of course we discussed this, and she actually, because this whole time I'm like, for weeks, I'm like, what is he doing? Because like, if he was selling drugs, like you don't spend the night, like what's, what's going on, right? Like yeah. I just could not figure it out. And he was like, tw he could have been like 21 to 23, somewhere in there. And what we think, based on the timeline, like he gets there like late-ish afternoon and then leaves at 8.30 the next morning. We think he's got a high school girlfriend and he's like sneaking in her window at night. Oh. Like he's getting there. He's get because three or four in the afternoon is when she'd be home from school, but maybe the parents aren't home from work yet. So he like hides in the bedroom and then he leaves in the morning after the parents have left for work. <laughs> wow. That's pretty shady. <laughs> um, so who knows? And the jury's still out on whether or not. I Has he been back? Well, that's the thing is it's very unpredictable when he shows up oh like so it could be girlfriend. sometimes he'll be there three times in a week and then not show up for almost a month sometimes like it's Ooh. just he'll sometimes he'll be there once a week for a while like it's kind of random so i don't know to be continued yes <laughs> <laughs> but I all have right another quick neighbor story for you okay so our old neighbor uh, basically, long story short, it was this married couple. They're, they aren't, like, old either. It's not like they're super old and hard of hearing. They're, like, probably in their early 40s. For whatever reason, they think my name is Penny. <laughs> <laughs> like, we lived above these people for, like, two years. They heard my husband refer to me as Margaret. And yet they would still, like, say, hey, Penny, when they saw me coming down the sidewalk. Like, what? 
<laughs> but whatever. I didn't even really like him that much. And anyway, the husband is, and we've since moved and all that, but the husband is the manager at the Chick-fil-A in my neighborhood. And I'll see him once in a while. And I haven't, but I hadn't seen him in at least a year. Um, anyway, the other day I was driving through and you know how they ask you your name for the order? Right. When you pull up. Well, I was, as I pulled up, I was like looking down already because I was in a hurry to like dig out my wallet to pay the guy. So I didn't see it was him, my neighbor, my old neighbor. And I said, we, we both said these two things at the same time and it was terribly awkward. He said, can I have the name for the order? I'm looking down, don't realize it's him. I say, Margaret. And as those words come out of my mouth, he says, oh, hi, Penny. <laughs> I was like, that's not. not he still said hi, Patty. But like, did he? Did it finally register to him in that moment where I talked over Shame. him and said Margaret? That he was like, wait, Shame. have I been calling her the wrong name this whole time? No, no. He else. still thought you were no, Patty. He, was, was, he knew who like... I was because he asked me how my husband was. Like, he knew it was me. <laughs> oh, because he went home to his wife and he's like, oh my god, I saw Penny's twin at the drive thru <laughs> <laughs> And her name is Margaret. <laughs> like, what? How dense can you be? Yeah. Oh. Okay. yeah. All right. Well, this, everything happens in Florida. Let's face it. These are all my neighbor woes. Everything happens in Florida. All right, we have to take a break and Jen has to wash the mask off of her face. So, uh, it's a very <laughs> offensive math. And we'll be right back. <laughs> Welcome back to a couple of instigators. Hello, friends. Jen. Hi. Hey. So, Jen, um, <laughs> they, they, it, it happens in America. There are so many missing people. Jen, it happens in America. They couldn't. Yeah. <laughs> She's not oh, used to that. that. She don't know about that. Come on. They get they even get to have the real Kinder Joy. <laughs> right. I mean, that's what, everybody knows about the rape van. If you see a white van with no windows coming, you get the hell out of there. <laughs> Chad, you the one that says free wine on it? No. <laughs> <laughs> I'm being that so fast. Yeah, a white van that says free candy and puppies on the side. That's, that's Jen, jump it in. Out. Let's go. Jen, they taught they taught you about that though when you were little. Stranger danger. It's not that yeah. safe. There was a um, like a light blue minivan, I remember, when I was little that had been something on the news. I don't know if it ever took a kid or just had been, like, spotted places that might take a kid. And I remember being out with my grandparents, with my brother, in the back seat of the car, driving down the road. And every time we saw a blue van, I'm like, hi, it's the kidnapper! <laughs> See? <laughs> yeah. Oh, boy. All right, so I did... I There was... Uh, all right, I haven't been instigating anything in so long. I've been busy with my trip, so I haven't really been instigating too many um, Facebook posts, you know, with uh, my comments. I, I just, I, it's been weak. Um, but I do, I, there was a lot of really dumb news stories that I didn't get to in the last three weeks. And uh, some of them are just so crazy that I need to discuss them even though it could be old, but what is uh, keto vagina? Keto crotch. Pardon? What? What is keto crotch? So I had to Google it because I didn't know. <laughs> I literally <laughs> never heard this, that phrase Cindy. in my life. Are you going to make me say what it is? I oh, yeah, you have. You have okay, you. so listen. We All right, I know keto is the diet, right? Correct. And we know what a crotch is. Okay, we know that. So, what is up with it? Okay, and why are they it's saying... Their crotch is on an all-meat diet. I got one coming up my nose. I can't believe you just said 
Yeah, it's on an all-meat diet. That's.